it's now time for our fifth session, strategy execution for scale. Scaling a business required not just strategic planning, but also effective execution across India. Wow Momo's journey under Mr. Daryani's leadership has been nothing short of phenomenal. His innovative business model, coupled with effective strategy execution, has made Wow Momo a household name and a testament to the power of scalable ideas. Mr. Daryani will be sharing his insights and experiences in executing strategies that have helped scale Wow Momo into a nationally recognized brand. His entrepreneurial journey, filled with rich lessons and practical insights, promises to enlighten and inspire us all. Guiding us through this insightful conversation will be our esteemed moderator, Professor Chandradeep Mitra, founder and CEO of People Magic. Professor Mitra is a marketing and strategy consultant with over 30 years of experience, and we are privileged to benefit from his vast knowledge and experience today. His experience in scaling businesses will add immense value to our discussion. Together, they bring a wealth of knowledge and practical wisdom on executing strategies for business scale. So without further ado, let's delve into our fifth session at Tycon Kolkata 2023, Strategies Execution for Scale. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Mr. Sagar Daryani and Mr. Siri Mitra. Thank you, Tamika. Hi, Sagar. Here we are again. You're on your favorite stage. And I think in this session, we can say that We've been hearing a lot of inspiring stories from a lot of people. And we are back to hearing an inspiring story from what we can truly say, one of our own. So great to have you here. OK, I keep losing. OK, I'm going to keep it informal. Uh, I think that's how you are. That's how we are. Um, did you fix this? Was the timing before lunch your plan? <laughs> Not really. Uh, don't have wow moments today here for uh, yeah. you know whatever reasons. But I think I've reached a stage where I need people to come to the stores yes. and not have them complimentary, but buy them. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Enough of sampling then. That's your growth strategy. Okay. I keep losing count. What's the number now? So by God's grace, now we are uh, 600 stores across 30 cities uh, with Wow Momo, Wow China, Wow Chicken. I think uh, the. The, the message in the, in the mind is quite clear that, you know, people make good food. We believe we make food good. And uh, for us, Wow is the brand. Uh, the other categories like a chicken or a china or a momo is the vertical. Uh, there's a major belly expansion happening in India, like you can see. So for us, the mantra is to own share of the stomach. Okay. You know, people talk about market share. Yeah. For us, it's about share of the stomach. Okay. There's a question. When you started Wow Momo, the idea was Momo. At some point of time, you did a, as you said, wow, the umbrella brand, and you now have three verticals. I'm assuming you may have plans for more. So when did this switch happen, saying that it's not just wow momo. There's a wow umbrella or a master brand, and under which you can have multiple sub-brands. When and how did this happen? So I think, I think uh, just before COVID, we realized that uh, you know, uh, we had 11 cities uh, 11 kitchens and we said QSR is about assembling you know we were manufacturing in every city and selling in every city we said that's not the way you can go scale right uh, because if you look at my role model brands like McDonald's Domino's you know they have an assembling model now here in Momo's because we were the first to be identified with Momo's like when I launched Wow Momo's I would go to any mall they would say Hamare mall mein momo nahi bikega. we have a Chinese player selling 10 plates that's enough so coming from there where you know we were not entertained by malls to today coming to a position where if a new mall is coming up, in their floor plans, you see a Wow Momo logo already built in there. Wow. I think we've built in that category. Now what next? So in our minds, we were like, how can we convert this category to an industry? Right? And uh, we were very clear that, you know, have we cracked the Momo business in India? We felt, no, we've cracked the art of operating QSR. Being the only homegrown brand to have SOPs in place to know how to do growth hacking to get scale, having only company-owned company operated stores, no franchising. So we were very clear that we've cracked the code of operating QSR in India. And we were like, what next? And uh, we were like, how do we also scale our Momo? How do we, so if brands like Domino's and KFC can come from abroad to India, how can we go global? That's the vision. Like, you know, in my head, I'm imagining a wow Momo in Times Square, New York, 10 years from now, right? How do we get there? And uh, Thank you, thank you. And, and, and I was like, uh, you know, we have to change things. Today, the momos that I make have a one-day shelf life. I have 11 kitchens, 11 cities. If I have to be 
like Domino's has converted a roti eating country into a pizza eating country, right? They are selling 400 rupees pizzas in 300 cities. I would like, if I have to get to 300 cities, I can't have 300 kitchens. That's impossible to manage. I can't have consistency. So we did backward integration. We went to the largest, uh, and I'm gonna, gonna talk honestly today, right? Heart to heart. We went to the largest gyoza factory in Japan, in Nagaoka. Spent almost one and a half months there. Learned how to scale gyoza, because gyoza is like available in every nook and corner in Japan. And it's, it's our version of, of momos in Japan. And uh, came back uh, with learnings where we were able to take the momo shelf life, which is fresh, without preservatives, from one day to first 10 days, then two months, then three months, and today it's at nine months shelf life. Completely temperature controlled, vacuum packing, no preservative, no MSG. I mean, COVID taught us about health, hygiene, happiness. We planned it before COVID, we executed after COVID, and today, from 11 kitchens in 11 cities, we have four kitchens in 30 cities. Another three years, we'll have one master factory. You've heard of steel factory, right? You'll hear of a Momo factory, and we'll be there in 200 plus cities. So that's how we worked backward. We, we, we moved completely now from 100% handmade Momos to maybe 70% handmade, because that's our USP, but 30% automation. Uh, you know, it's, it's a full line of conveyor belt, there's IQF. I mean, I mean, today it's like a mini factory, but we're talking about a large factory. We've acquired land in Telangana where the government is giving us subsidy and, and we are really scaling it to the next level. So for me, that's real food tech. You know, the way I was able to take the Momo shelf life from one day to nine months. You know, selling online is not food tech. Then when it came to my stores, you know, we had normal manual fryers. We created robotic fryers. So if a Wes Momo has to be fried for one minute, 27 seconds, it'll exactly fly for one, I mean, fry for one minute, 27 seconds. Uh, today I have a walking machine in my stores where I don't need a chef to make Chinese. The machine makes noodles, the machine makes rice. Uh, today we are working on a Momo vending machine. So, you know, you go to a corporate tech park, you don't need to have a store, you press button and hot Momos will come out, blast steamed. So I think for us, that's been food tech, that's the way we've looked at technology uh, to be an enabler, to scale. Now when we cracked that with Momo, we said, what next? And COVID happened. Just before COVID, we launched Wow China, our second vertical. Now, Wow China was supposed to be an experiment. We had 10 odd stores before COVID. We launched it in December 19. COVID happened in March 20. Uh, April was the first time in my life where I had a loss of six crores in one month. So revenues fell from 16 crores a month to 1.8 crores. My salary payout was 5 crores a month. It was, it was scary. You know, you're sitting in a room with elderly parents. Your laptop is your world. You can't even go out. And you're scared. You are literally scared. You feel depressed. But then you also have a silver lining that this is the social sorrow. It's not just for you, it's for everyone. Okay, let's get back to basics. So we had only 60 stores operational. First thing first that we did is that, you know, we needed revenues coming in. So we started, we were like, you know, if we can sell Momos online from 60 stores and get some 1.8 crore revenue in one month, let's start selling everything under the sun because it's all about supply chain. The same Domino Swiggy, the same Swiggy Zomato rider can just take my product and go and supply. So we launched a new vertical called Wow Momo Essentials for that short interim period. We were selling everything from eggs, milk, bread to condoms to Everything. So basically a survival strategy. Survival strategy. But that survival strategy made us believe that there's so much more that we can do that we were not doing. Now all those stores where Wow Momo was operational and the dining area was shut, we said let's convert them to a Wow China virtual store. Because customers are not coming, I have extra space. So the 60 stores, which was giving revenue for 60 stores, started giving revenue for 120 stores. And that led to the growth of Wow China during COVID. And from 10 stores prior to COVID, today we are sitting at a 15 crore revenue only for Wow China with more than 140 stores of only Wow China. So when COVID, when the lockdown began to open up, wherever a Wow China was doing well, we planted a Wow China store beside a Wow Momo store. So you see many of our stores in neck to neck capacity. So that's what led to the growth of Wow China. And then when we grew, we were like... But isn't it a potential cannibalization? Not really, because see, I think... You have, to bring the so you have to bring the consumer back to you again and again. You know, he comes back to you for a Momo every week. How do you bring him back for a Chinese meal every week? Because today, I am anyways competing with a Chinese brand in a mall in a food court. How can I replace that Chinese brand with a Wow brand? So that was the thesis, that was the logic. Today, we are there 100 malls with Wow China and Wow Momo. Sales have only grown up. The brand equity has grown. And then, 
last year we were like, what next? And then KFC is the role model brand. I was like, you know, KFC has taught India how to eat fried chicken. But if you look at India by stats, and I think data is something which we look at as a fuel for growth. We were like, you know, 70% of the population in India has non-veg. Out of that 70%, 95% has chicken. Only one brand for chicken, international brand. Amazing job done, role model brand for us. But let's make chicken more fun. Let's unboard chicken. And that's when we launched Wow Chicken. We were like, if KFC at that time was doing 2,000 crores with, between Devyani and Sapphire, we were like, you know, in five years from now, they want to get to 10,000 crores. Five years from now, if we can do even one-tenth of KFC and make chicken fun, you know, I think it'll be another make in India story. So what do you mean by make chicken fun? Is it new Indian flavors? What is it? So what we did is that, you know, we intentionally did not name it Wow Fried Chicken. Because, you know, I think we, we've, being young guys, we've been working towards health, hygiene, happiness. We said, you know, let's get grilled in, you know, so remove the word fried. We launched new variants in grilled chicken, like a tandoori chicken that India wants. We did a peri peri chicken, we did an americano chicken. We launched more flavors than fried chicken. KFC just had one standard flavor. We were the first to launch, and I'm saying this on record, we were the first to launch a peri peri fried chicken. And then, you know, my role model brand KFC also did peri peri fried chicken. Uh, I'm not saying they copied me, but yeah, we were the first to do it. So it feels good. Uh, and from, and today 53% of my menu mix is grilled chicken. Uh, we created a product called Snack Jack, which was priced at 69, 79 bucks, you know, mini burgers. We did wet chicken nuggets because, you know, we were like, vegetarians don't get options in, 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 in a KFC or in a fried chicken brand. So we did wet chicken nuggets, we, we did, you know, cheese pops, etc. And today, for me, 8% of my revenue is from vegetarians. Vis-a-vis -vis to my competition brand having 2% revenue from vegetarians. 53% is grilled versus 18% grilled for them. So we made chicken fun and now we are reiterating the model because we are like, till now we've done what KFC was doing and we bettered it. Uh, let's try and get the game changed. So now we are converting wow chicken to kebabs, rolls, wraps, and biryani also, because everything under chicken comes here. Okay. Maybe two years from now, you'll see a chicken salad also here, because it's chicken, like it's a big umbrella. But it'll still be wow chicken. Yeah, yeah, wow chicken. Any Absolutely. plans for a fourth vertical or a fifth? So a wow X or a wow Y would definitely come. When? Uh, so we have now launched a new format uh, called wow eats, which has all the three brands together. We have one store in, uh, in Chennai, one store in Hyderabad, we're opening uh, two flagship stores in Calcutta, one in Sarad Bosch Road, one in Newmarket. The Newmarket store is my biggest store ever. It's a 5,000 square feet, 250 seater restaurant. So from a 50 square feet kiosk to a 5,000 square feet, I mean, that's been our journey by God's grace with the love of all the people here because if you don't consume us, you know, we don't grow. But uh, there we are plugging in our new vertical called a Wow Kulfi, uh, which is our first take on deserts. Okay. Uh, stick kulfis, slice kulfis. Uh, for us, it's always been about making food fun. So, so if, it's a, if it's a Valentine's Day, we'll do heart-shaped chocolate momos, right? Yet I'm single. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you decide this new vertical? I mean, is it data? Is it market feedback? Customer requests? How do you decide which is going to be the second or the fourth or the seventh I new think, vertical? I think, I think we look at cuisine gaps. Uh, I think, like I said, data is the new fuel for growth. Uh, consumer research uh, is something which, uh, which drives that, that growth. Uh, I think knowing your consumer is very important. You know, for me, my customer is my biggest celebrity. Any new store opens, customer comes and cut the ribbon. My product is the hero, my customer is the celebrity. We don't want to have a face to the brand, to be very honest. Uh, and we're very clear that, uh, that, that, you know, we need to know exactly what the consumer wants. A lot of people, you know, uh, have made memes on us saying that chocolate momo kaun banata hai, momo burger kaun banata hai, but today, 12% of my sale mix is just momo burgers, you know. 4% uh, of my sale is chocolate moments, right? So people love it. So you give people what you want. You don't give people what you like, but you give people what they like. And, and as a consumer, today if a customer tells me that this is white and not black, I'll say, yes, this is white, this is not black. But let me explain you and let me filter it down. And, and as an entrepreneur, it's my job to set trends. Hold on. So before you did a chocolate momo, no one could have imagined there would be a chocolate momo, right? So first you thought of it, then you put it on the market, and then the consumer feedback was good. So the question is, giving what consumers want, in this case, is not true, no? It's, it's that you have imagined a new thing. No, no, we've imagined, we've innovated, we've, uh, 
we've set that trend, but the fact that it's being accepted by the consumer means that's what they want. Yeah. They wanted food to be fun. They wanted that mundane momo to have more varieties. Uh, they wanted that steam momos to become a tandoori momo. They wanted that steam momos to become a sizzler momo. It's, 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 it's giving them what they want without them knowing what they want because you have to set that trend. I mean, that's the job of an entrepreneur, right? Today, when, when uh, five years ago, my investors would ask me, Chennai mein momo kon khayega? You know, how big is the TAM for momo? You know, the, the total uh, addressable market X, Y, Z. And I'm, I'm like, today I have 53 stores in Chennai. They don't ask me, you know, how big is the market? They ask me the opposite question. Momo sells in Siliguri, when you sell in Siliguri. You know, it's like smaller markets. You yeah. know, so it's become more micro from micro. So I think as an entrepreneur, it's your job to set trends. It's your job to uh, go out there, believe in your idea. Yes, be practical. Listen to everyone. Do what your heart says. Uh, the speaker before me was talking about failures. I think, you know, we only keep talking about successes, but I have had so many failures. You know, like I keep saying... Mention the top two. Uh, we did a mango momo once, which was a big disaster. We've done this format called Wow China Bistro, which is a restaurant format, four of them, doing decently well, but handling those four stores, I rather handle 40 small, form small box format or QSR and not get into casual dining. So, a lot of those mistakes, plenty of those mistakes. Basically, your DNA is QSR. DNA is QSR. I think DNA is quick food, DNA is convenience. The consumer wants convenience. Now, you call it QSR, you call it uh, quick turnaround time, you call it, uh, uh, you know, cut, copy, paste model, something which is scalable. Now, the minute you start having handcrafted dim sums in a bistro store, you are becoming chef dependent. The minute you become human dependent, you can't scale. So the learning that I've had is that if you're looking at scale, if you're looking at growth, your pace of expansion and your pace of operation have to work hand in hand. Yes, there are different phases to this entire growth. For example, people ask me about growth versus profitability, right? So. I raised my first round of angel funding thanks to Taikon 2015 where I met my mentor Sanjeev Bikchandani at Hayat. I had a wow momo stall there. Uh, I intentionally had a wow momo stall there because I knew investors were coming. I wanted them to try my product. Because if I come and say, you know, this is who I am, let my product speak. There was a huge queue out there. People were not having the buffet but they were eating momos. I think Sanjeev saw that. People on stage spoke about us. I think you need to create an impression in the mind of the consumer and people where they talk about you. You know, word of mouth runs consumer industries, consumer brands. So I met Sanjeev here. Before I met IAN, I think I was at a 15% EBITDA, but very slow growth. I mean, two crores of revenue a month. Uh, you know, from there to getting to 100 crore revenue, I think my EBITDA must have come down to 10%, but growth was happening at a pace of 60%. Last year, we grew by 93%. You know, we jumped from 200 odd crores to 400 odd crores. Uh, this year, we'll get from 400 to 700. So, I think it's a call that you take as to when you want to do the plugins to reduce profitability, to get that scale. Today, I have a professional CEO for the FMCG business. My FMCG was launched on 14th of November. The monthly revenue for that business is lesser than his annual salary. So, you have to take those calls to get to scale. But today, I'm in a position to do it. So do you kind of plan it based on how much funds you have and what you see as a vision that this is the time to scale, prioritize growth over profitability. When you've reached a certain scale, now hatch down and, you know, improve profitability. Do you, do you go up and down like that? I'm a full banya. I'm a Sindhi. Money has to make money. I think cash is the king. Uh, it's about cash flow. It's never about EBITDA for us. Uh, you know, EBITDA is just an Excel... Uh, column that you have. I think uh, we are very, very, very sure of what we have, what we can do and what we can save. And from COVID, our balance being zero has now become balance being zero plus maybe uh, 50 crores or whatever, you know, and the minute you go below 50 crores as if you are COVID because uh, earlier when investors would say whatever day comes when, you know, your revenue falls, you were like, yeah, yeah, what are you After COVID, you were like, no, that can happen, right? So, and, and, I think, and I think COVID has also reinvented the entire business. Prior to COVID, we were 15% delivery. Today, we are 44% delivery. We do 12 lakh online orders a month. Uh, I, think, I think we've become more of a, I would not say omni-channel, but a multi-channel business. You know, where you're selling online, you're selling offline, you're selling on the shelves, you have FMCG, you're available anywhere and everywhere. You know, today, today we're talking to a couple of multiplex chains where we're talking, talking about serving Momo just the way they serve a sandwich or a burger in the shelves. So the multiplex guy who serves you popcorn will give you a Momo in a minute. So I think, I, think, I think you have to make this, like I said, you know, converting a product to an industry. 
like my vision when I talk only about momos is 10 years from now, whether it's a roadside guy selling momos or whether it's a five star who wants to outsource his momos for a catering, the production should come from me. I should be the momo king of the country. I should be the only one having capacity to produce a crore of momos every day. You know, today we sell 10 crores momos a month. A year. I want to get to a level where we can produce 10, uh, uh, 10 crore momos a day. Wow. You know? So, so, so you know, you, you, you take scale to that level where, where no one can match you, right? And uh, it's a machinery that you build. Now, to build that machinery, you need to at times burn, but you also need to earn. You need to know when you need to earn. So, like in our heads, we've come down from plus 15% to 10% during before COVID to minus 10 in COVID to back to now break even, growing at 90% and not burning money. I think it's a job. I can't think of many companies in India which is growing at 90% and not burning money. So, for me, I'm grateful to God, I'm grateful to my team. Uh, wake up every morning with a very different kick. And like you asked me what keeps me going for growth. Uh, I'll be very vocal here. Uh, I think there's a, there's a larger goal in life that I have. Uh, and, I, and I live for that and that keeps me going. I think your dreams should be do so big that they don't, they don't allow you to sleep. You know, and, and I think that's what makes entrepreneurship fun, right? Uh, so there have been days when you're so happy, you're so happy that you just can't sleep and then there are days when you're so sad, you're so upset, you're depressed, you feel like giving up and you don't sleep and you're shit scared. Okay? Now, what keeps me going, what keeps my team going, I don't know whether I'll get there or not but I've become more vocal about it. I'm 35 now, by the time I, I, I get to uh, 50, I have 15 years, I want to have 50 free cancer hospitals, I want to contribute one rupee of every moment towards that cause. The job is already done, uh, you know, you know, I feel if we can do it, everyone can do it. After 50, if, if possible, I want to get into politics. If a chai wala can become a Pradhan Mantri, I want to see what a momo wala can do. Wow. So, I think the larger goal to it, uh, you know, if, even if I don't get there, even if I fail, like, you know, Bashpan mein, my brother had told me that, you know, aim for the stars so that even if you fail, you can get to the moon. Even if I fail, if I can inspire 10 people to go and live that dream, I think my job is done. I can go down to my grave being a happy man. I don't know whether I'll get there or not. I might drastically fail. You know, today everyone is celebrating me become successful. Maybe in a year, few years, I might be a biggest failure. I, I'm okay with it because I know I gave it my best shot. What, I mean, today everyone is talking X, Y, Z about Baiju's. I'm getting a bit controversial here. But I think, I think, I think he's done a phenomenal job and I'll always have respect for what he's done because wherever he is today, you know, they made him God. Now you're making him a villain. I think it's the entire ecosystem to be also blamed for it to a large extent. And I personally feel he's also going to be my hero. Uh, people like pe people who've built Paytm, people who've built Zomato, people who've built all the other XYZ brands. No matter what you talk about them, boss, you need, you, need, you need guts to go out there and deliver. And I'm saying it with names because I feel those are the people who've inspired so many of the entrepreneurs. Success, failure is different. I think in India, we need to learn to appreciate failures. Uh, the Tycon, which uh, which, 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 you know, we had organized in 2018, which you were also a part of. I think the, the tagline there was hashtag mistakes are good because mistakes are actually good. It teaches you a lot. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think we need to get to a system where we learn to celebrate failures. Trust me, guys, the day I realized that it's okay to fail, the day I realized it's okay to have mental health issues, the day I realized it's okay to not be okay, I slept better. And in that sleep also, I was thinking, Scale, scale, and scale. Okay, since you mentioned scale, um, okay, I, I thought I knew you a few things about you, but this cancer thing and politics, very interesting, very inspiring. But before that, you have an interim goal, which is um, Times Square. So when are you going global? See, we feel uh, India is huge. Uh, COVID gave a lot of, uh, lot of breaks to the acceleration. Uh, we feel every small city in India is like a country in a country. Right? Uh, Delhi is a country in a country, Bombay is a country in a country. So out of my 30 cities, I'm still burning money in Delhi and Bombay. Uh, so a small term goal is to get profitable there. Uh, I think there are so many other untapped cities. Like I said, you know, if Domino's can operate in 300 plus cities, uh, you know, why can't we operate in, uh, in, in, in another 270 more cities and get there? For me, someone like a Domino's, Jubilant is a role model brand. I think what they've done is phenomenal. Uh, I'm fortunate to be meeting the CEO of Jubilant today in the evening. He's coming to my office. but. Uh, you know, I think, I, think, I think they've done a phenomenal job and I think India is huge. The next five years is definitely India. But uh, I think Bangladesh and Middle East would happen very soon in the next two to three years, hopefully. 
a lot of interest coming from there. There's already, by the way, someone selling Wow Momo foods in Bangladesh, which is a complete copy of us, and we filed a trademark suit. Uh, she calls herself the founder of Wow Momo, and she's selling franchises, duping people. Uh, so, you know, we filed a, a, filed a case against her. We had to go through the High Commission. In a way, it also makes me believe that, you know, when people copy you, you feel good about it. Uh, we've seen a lot of copies of Wow across the country. Uh, the other day, my friend sent me a picture from somewhere in Srinagar where someone was selling Momos with the Wow Momo name. Uh, in Chennai and Cochin, if you go to the roadside guy, he does not call himself Momos. He calls himself Chicken Wow Momo, Veg Wow Momo. So, you know, we've become the Xerox of that, of that, of that product there. But uh, I think that's just validation of the love we've got from consumers, of the hard work by the team. And trust me, guys, everything is not always hunky-dory. Uh, I, mean, I mean, just three days ago, I was superly upset and scared about a few things. Uh, and next two months would define whether my fear is uh, taken care of or it just gets more and more worse. So I think, I think as an entrepreneur, you have your uh, hiccups of feeling, falling back. I think, I think what keeps you going is the never say die attitude and uh, never give up being diligent. And uh, yeah, I think, I, think, I think we all will fall, we all will rise. Uh, the stage will be there, the stage will not be there. You will be in the audience. And it's good to be in the audience. Like, you know, I made it a point to meet startups every Saturday, at least two or three of them, those who come on a first come, first serve basis, because I might contribute 1% to them, but I learn 100% from them. It keeps me young, it keeps me energetic, it keeps me going, I give me new ideas. So yeah, super happy. Okay. Now, one of the things you mentioned is, you know, you have your role models, McDonald's, KFC, you went to Japan to figure out this thing. So this entire scale, automation, is this something that can completely disrupt the entire Indian food? Because Indian food is great and Indian food hasn't gone global. So I'm talking of, you know, South Indian food, I'm talking of samosas, I'm talking of anything. So do you think there's an opportunity for Indian food to use automation, scale, uh, massive production, all of that, vending machines, those kind of things? You think definitely? I think I think Indian food, Indian charts. Uh, I think you know today with Wow Eats, what we are doing is we are we are being the new age, making India uh, food brands similar to a Haldiram's. You know, Haldiram has big stores selling charts, selling chola baturas. We are selling momos, China chicken, and the one roof going for bigger stores. I think automation can go. Is automation is no more uh, good to have? It's a must have if you want to scale. Indian food. To a large extent already, you know, with the different kinds of packaging today, you get fresh pudina chutney vacuum packed in a USA. You get frozen parathas, you get frozen samosas already in the USA. The biggest consumption of frozen food in India is samosas that go from Haldi Rams, from BKG, etc. So I think technology has something that's taken it there. I think you will see a lot of more automation coming in. Uh, I don't know whether we'll ever get into Indian food or not. Uh, you know, would love to have a Wow Bharat or a Wow Bangla someday. Uh, at the moment, we don't know. We'll have to look at data. We'll have to look at what's good for business, what's good for unit economics. Uh, look at data, look at consumer demand. But I personally feel Indian food, uh, I call Calcutta the food capital of the country. And I personally feel that you know, Indian food will travel a long way, already is traveling a long way. Some of the best Michelin star rated chefs are Indians. Uh, last month, I was in Bangkok with Chef Gagan. Uh, what a new setup he's done you know, for his, uh, I think, Miss Maria and uh, Mr. Singh. Uh, the new restaurant that he's built, uh, fabulous. So I think, I think we are keeping the flag high. Uh, we are known for our food, we are known for our emotions. We make our food with emotions. And I think emotions is something which in food, idly, nine out of 10 times will not let you down. Great. I think we're getting over time. I was purposefully not looking back because I knew Tamina would be there. Uh, do we have time for questions at, uh, no, we don't, we don't. I'm sure there are hundreds of questions and we won't have time and if you take only three, it'll be unfair to the other 97. So hopefully you're stepping up and doing a... Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So Sagar's our own and he's going to be here for a while. So um, last two, you know, um, lessons or, you know, lessons you've learned in the last few years or uh, words of wisdom. I think uh, I'll tell you what's, what's been something, you know, I call it FIR. <laughs> But thankfully, no legal case till now. But for us, FIR has always been format, innovation, reimagination. And I think uh, entrepreneurship is all about that. You know, you need to reimagine, you need to reinvent yourself. Uh, I think where we were when we had 10 stores to where we were when we had 100 to where we are today, I think every three months we need to reinvent. Uh, I'm reading this book called, uh, I, I don't read books, so I don't want to 
यू नो गिव यू गाइज अ फॉल इम्प्रेशन दैट मैं बहुत पढ़ता हूँ और बहुत देखता हूँ बट वन बुक विच आई हैज़ रियली आई जस्ट इट द सिनॉप्स आई माइट रीड द होल बुक आई डोंट नो बट इट्स कॉल द यू नो इट्स गॉट कॉल द ट्वेल्व वीक यर विच इज़ वेर यू लुक एट एवरी क्वार्टर एज अज अ यर एंड यू लुक एट एवरी वीक एज अ मंथ Uh, and if you can implement that, if you can do that, uh, you know you would change perspective. Uh, it's up to you how you go about it. I, I I personally believe you should go about your job. If working from home gives you comfort, do that. If starting your day at six in the morning gives you comfort, do that. I think it's about quality output. And uh, if you don't have data and knowledge for input, output will never come. So knowledge is very important. Knowing things is very important. Reading the newspaper is very important. Uh, you know. thinking about ideas is very important uh, you know i mean i mean had i not thought about ideas i would have never done a momo burger i would have never done a you know a tandoori momo or a sizzler momo so i think you need to go out there innovate implement express yourself but be very realistic and honest to yourself i think i see many founders who are very close to the idea but very far from the practical world i think i think the best thing that we've done at wow momo we've kept things very simple no matter how flashy we might look you know had i been a brand from us if i would have opened my first i would have seen a 2 km line in those days today i think we have value for making india but i needed a bright yellow color for people to get attracted to people to move my name had to be a wow momo had it only been wow i would have been a big failure so my name had to define my product so i think keep things simple keep things more informative where people know what you are selling how you are selling why you are selling and you through good i wish we could carry on longer but we thank can't you. so thank you Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Following a strategic journey through the execution for scale, it's time to thank our speaker, Mr. Sagar Daryani, and our moderator, Mr. Siri Mitra. I would like to invite Mr. Bimal Patwari, President Tai Kolkata, along with Mr. Basant Kumar Rana, CEO and co-founder, Workmates Core to Cloud Solutions Private Limited, to join us on stage and express our gratitude. Friends, we'll be breaking for lunch now. Wow, Momo has made us really hungry. So uh, we'll be coming back to this hall again at 2 p.m. sharp to start our next session for lunch. <laughs> <laughs>